welcome to the Limitless Podcast. My name is Byron Sarko and I'll be your host for the show where we are dedicated to bring you the latest and greatest insights, tools and strategies to help you take your mind, business, relationships and physical health to limitless heights. In this episode, we have Aaron Tu and Andrew Stenos from Integrity Projects of New South Wales, where you'll be hearing about how in just four short years, they've grown from an office in Aaron's bedroom to a multi-seven-figure business delivering some of the most stunning construction and renovation projects around Australia. We'll be going deep on all things to do with business startup, including leadership, personal development, sales, marketing, as well as the overriding philosophy behind these guys' success. I trust you'll find a full of valuable insights, so enjoy, and I look forward to reading your reviews and comments after the show. And welcome to an episode of Limitless. We've got an exciting duo guest with us today. We have Andrew and Aaron from Integrity Projects. I'm super looking forward to sharing some epic insights with you all today about not only business success, but also how you can grow a business and maintain other important areas of life to you. So it's also a matter of keeping in uh, check with health, maintaining relationships and looking at how to achieve that holistic approach to well-being, which is why it's such a pleasure to have these guys here today. I've had a long-term relationship with them and I've seen them come up the ranks and they're one of New South Wales' fastest growing construction builders as well as project renovators. So guys, welcome. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> So this is one of our early podcasts, so it's, it's really exciting to, to kick it off with, with the two of you. Um, before we get started, I'd love to ask you one key question is, what's your favorite food and why? Alrighty, favorite food and why? <laughs> I'm going to have to go with dumplings. Um, I really enjoy picking them up one by one. <laughs> Dousing it in soy sauce. And Mixing all those flavors. Nice. Do you, do you like the vinegar component to it the as well? The vinegar is extremely important. It's a must. <laughs> I'm all for the vinegar. That's my favorite. Andy, what about you? Food of the month. Um, for, me, I don't, for, for me, if I was to choose an absolute banger, I'd have to go for a killer steak. Oh, and it has to be premium. Yeah, it has nice. to be off its face. Yeah, it has no, to be cooked no. ridiculously. I kind of like the rock pool sort of feel. Uh-huh, the New no. York City, <laughs> the ridiculous wine, the stupid yeah. steak. That's my jam. Yeah, very fine dining. Oh, yeah. yeah 100%. <laughs> suit on. <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> and and how, do you have, how do you have your steak cooked? Uh, medium rare. Medium rare. Medium okay. rare. Bernays to the side. Assortment of, uh, assortment of sauces. Fantastic. Primarily, primarily uh, mustards. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. I'm, I'm a bit of a medium. Yeah. Right. Yes. You're a medium yeah. dude. Yes. 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 So, so guys, uh, I'm well aware of the amazing feats you guys have had. Um, uh, uh, tell us, h- how long have you been in business for? When did Integrity start? Give us a bit of a background to the origin story. Sure. So Integrity was started four years ago. Uh, I guess we, we, Aaron and myself worked together. Uh, we sort of came together to sort of start a company in the fact of that we'd had seen the commercial side of building, uh, had seen the structure, seen how like, you know, good management can really help. And what we intended to do was take that sort of high level structure that had, we'd seen in sort of commercial and bring it to the residential market. Uh, our focus was also to go into premium. We wanted to do something that was a little bit more you know, bespoke and what we delivered. And we felt that we could offer a nice service and we knew that that would be what the market needed. And that's what we went to focus for. Awesome. So you both had had experience already in the construction industry before choosing to start your own business? Yep. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Correct. And, and what were some of the things that you had seen in the construction industry that perhaps gave birth to the desire to go out and start your own venture. Yeah. So Andrew and I really like high end clothes. We like high end cars. We like the premium of of all things. Yeah. Nice. Um, Working in the construction industry, we noticed that that was lacking. Mm. Um, The service wasn't there. Mm. Um, If you go to a five star hotel, you feel like a king or a queen. Yeah. That just was lacking in yeah. the construction market. Yeah, and I can so vouch for that. Mm. the flip side of that is quality, high end quality, attention to detail. There were so many projects out there where it was rushed, rushed, it was all about the time and not about the quality. Mm. Um, we had a, an inkling that there was a market out there for people that didn't mind time, they were more focused on quality as well as service. Mm. Uh, and that's what we set out with, you know, to achieve that goal and to. Um, really bring that to life. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. 
And I think um, it, it's easy for people to underestimate what you've been through to build the brand that you have today. I think mm. it's, it's quite easy. You see a lot of your um, promotions going around all over social media. You, you've been featured on TV, on radio. So we look at the Integrity brand today and it's like, wow, these guys are so established. It looks yeah. so premium, so professional. But tell us a little bit about was it easy to get to this point? What was it like? Where, where was it at four years ago? Where, when you got started, what are some of the challenges you went through? I'd love to, I'm sure the listeners would love to know about yeah. the before story. Um, well, with every story, there's always a very humble beginning. <laughs> and it was no, not this easy the entire time. It still isn't easy. Um, Andrew and I started with just the two of us, one you, and our office was my bedroom. It was your bedroom. Uh, Is that my, right? My amazing. bedroom. Amazing. Uh, so it was nice and cozy. 1200 mil desk. 1200 mil desk. It was a one person desk. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, but the idea was there. We wanted to go out. We wanted to do great service and do good construction. And we really believed in that. Um, the initial challenge was trying to get other people to believe in it. Mm. Uh, trying to get them to understand what we were about, even though we hadn't necessarily brought this vision to life yet. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is around, all right, how do we uh, position the brand so that it's perceived in that way? Yeah. That's one huge aspect that we are constantly looking at and revising. How are we perceived in the market? How can we accurately uh, put into words and a, a feeling yeah. what we're trying to achieve? Yeah. Um, and so we've had heaps of iterations over the years as to our brand, yeah. um, the look, the colors, all the branding, yeah. so that we're perceived in the way that w- what, of what we're really trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that in itself is a huge, huge, huge uh, obstacle. Yeah. Uh, one of many. Yeah. So, if I'm correct, you started uh, with a bit more core focus. It was bathroom renovation specifically. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So, so, t- so tell us about why why was that the path you chose to get into initially, and versus now you've now you step forward a few years later and it's uh, you offer the full caboodle mm. from full home builds to full bespoke renovations, yeah. including anything that you could do with the property, pretty much. Yeah, so tell us. What made you chose to get into bathrooms and then what led to your transition into expanding that service? Mm. So I think uh, the longer vision was always to build a company that would deliver beautiful homes, period. Mm. Uh, an area that, you know, what, like Aaron was saying earlier before, challenges with a, uh, any business is, is gaining work, gaining mm. the ability to get work. Mm. And I think one of the... Particularly when you're unknown, right? Absolutely. At the beginning. Absolutely. Yes. When, you're not, when you're not established and... The tendency to give bigger size, bigger scale work when you haven't got the name is, is quite challenging. Mm. So we initially started to win smaller size works, you know, small renovations, yeah. uh, small bathrooms, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what we, we took a path of, okay, cool, we'd love to prove to ourselves, but also grow the company at the same time. Can we be the best? Yes. In a very short period, we, we, we accomplished that. You know, in less than two years, we became the name that was known for premium bathrooms. Awesome. But because we had that longer side vision and we knew that we were going to create something a lot larger, mm. we instantly pivoted. Once mm. we had built our team and our structure to which we knew we could deliver the right service. Mm. And you know, now it's, it's, it's an up and, up and go game. We really want to build something that's incredible. Yeah. We love what we do. Yeah. I think uh, I one of the things that I find super, super fulfilling about you know, being able to do that is that there's something special about when you get to build something special. Yeah. You know, we get to yeah. deliver someone's 30 year lifetime home. Mm. And I feel incredibly responsible mm. for delivering that impeccable service, that, in, that great feeling of design. Yeah. And I think if we hadn't learnt all those lessons on the smaller stuff, we wouldn't be able to deliver those you know epically delivered projects that we do now on yeah. a larger scale love it because they do say that the home is an extension of yourself isn't it it's absolutely Where you, it's an opportunity to bring out your creative flair it, yeah, it's, it's really an extension of you and absolutely. and um a, a key point i'd like to focus on is the importance of a vision because that's something i've come across time and time again in my business and with, with other clients i've worked with mm-hmm. that those who seem to be able to persevere through challenge and through the short-term setbacks is because mm. they they really have that focus on a longer-term vision and when that vision is so strong mm. it gives them that drive that the hunger that ability to handle that short-term discomfort so tell us about some of the the short-term discomforts you guys have gone through from moving from your bedroom then get, getting your first team members how, how was that sort of process and and then share 
a little bit more about how important the vision was to you to keep you on track. Yeah, so where to start? There's plenty. Um, <laughs> I remember distinctly when we decided to move from my bedroom <laughs> and get our first office. Uh, Andrew and I were in disagreement. Okay. I wanted to go for a cheaper office, ah. one that wouldn't necessarily be seen by people yeah. uh, in, in an odd location because we're largely... Uh, had an online presence okay but Andrew really really pushed for being in the right area okay having a beautiful office to yeah. bring people to because it's aligned with our brand our culture and ultimately our vision yes uh, now early in the days being a very logical thinker uh, that I, I didn't understand that I didn't understand that concept but Andrew pushed for it he pushed for the vision and now years on I see the importance of being in the right area where you want the work, mm. um, having a beautiful office to come to and to bring people to, yeah. it all plays a part in making this vision a reality. Mm. Uh, and that is a huge, huge driver. I was only looking at the numbers. Yeah. Um, and when I thought that we couldn't afford yeah. you know, to be in the nice area, yeah. um, I was proved wrong. Yeah, was proved wrong. amazing. Yeah. So, so this is one of the key aspects to running a successful business is, is leadership agreement mm. versus yeah. if you have opposing views or opposing ideas how you handle those differences so yeah. whereas sometimes if it's a single man operation yeah. then they wear all the consequences of their choices they, sure. they have their own self to brainstorm with yeah. whereas having two of you and as, as you've just explained you're a bit more linear logical thinker and then yeah. Andrew from how, what I know about you as well you're very um, the big ideas, it's, it's very long term, it's very like, I want the best of the best. <laughs> These are if you've just explained about your steak preference, <laughs> big expensive wine to accompany it. So tell us about some of that for people who are in leadership positions and maybe they're experiencing people that have uh, differing ideas or they might come across a, an obstacle where they're clashing. Mm. Over, over which way to go. So tell us a little bit about that. How did you, what did you learn about yourselves and each other mm. in the importance yeah. of great leadership? Mm. Yeah. I think um, what you touched on, sort of the coming the clear vision is the number one. Yeah. Sort of because regardless of what happens, I think you can be not put off by the setbacks. In business, there is always setbacks. Yeah. For every time there's an achievement, there's also a setback. Yeah. You know, and it's sort of an equilibrium to which you know it sort of keeps you humble. Yeah. I think with a business partnership especially as well it's you know when you're solely by yourself you tend to sort of you know think that your thoughts are only correct and don't know what it's like to be challenged mm. I think one of the things I find you know pretty juicy right at the start of um, a relationship when you're working together is sort of understanding that person and coming out and approaching it towards a way where you can be understanding of what they're feeling mm. and mm. both will have a very important you know level of uh, opinion as to what could be right and what could be done because yeah. a lot of business is built off you know uh, hunches and, and and when you're establishing yourself you're sort yeah. of like predicting what you think the market will do and what i found for myself and aaron was the pivotal key to our success was approaching it with a good communication mm. a level that we're understanding and seeing two sides of the coin mm. yes i like my opinion mm. but how could this opinion be you know uh, added incorporated yeah. and by doing that you can sort of have a bit more of a two-sided understanding and for mm. me that was a big challenge you know how to be ego yeah. I think there was a lot of myself that I had yet to address which came up early in the piece you know a lot of anger issues yeah, a lot wow. of frustrations yeah, yeah wow absolutely Thanks for sharing. yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah and what it forced me you know I think you know especially since we spent a lot of time together Byron we got to sort of see what do these challenges present mm. and how could the other person be more understanding to their side, you know? Mm. So, I mean, we spent a lot of time together mm. working on those challenges and I think, you know, I thank you a lot for mm. sort of allowing me to sort of see what another person's opinion and what another thought process can result in. Because whilst the vision is great and it's fantastic and you can drive all these unbelievable things that no logical brain could mm. conceive, mm. without the stability of, structure mm. and been able to see you know Aaron's perspective his understanding mm. the company wouldn't exist mm. the structure wouldn't exist mm. the strength of it wouldn't exist mm. you know and I think this is what you know while the vision is important it's equally important to understand that the great partnership and the great mm. 
ability to communicate and understand another person's opinion, whether it's in business or in personal, yeah. you know, is success to, yeah. towards a relationship. Love it. Love yeah. it. Um, just for, for the listeners <clears throat> who hear a little bit of, of the background, um, the reason Aaron and Andy, uh, their success is so close to my heart as well is because going back um, probably three years ago, mm-hmm. we, yeah. we did a few months of work together and we went through some of the core principles of leadership and how to establish effective relationships. And as Andy has so courageously admitted that there was sometimes ego can get in the way and sometimes there can be a... a a gap in seeing eye to eye in what exactly is the vision. So the key is for, for business success and for any area of life, even in a, a whether it be a, a family dynamic or an intimate relationship, it's communicating openly from the heart about, okay, where do we want to go? What is the, ve- what is the vision we're heading for? Because once, we're, once you've established a really clear vision, then all decisions, all thinking, all action can be planned around what serves the vision in the most effective and efficient manner. Yeah. So that's why it's so awesome to see how when you two really created that clear vision that you both shared, mm-hmm. it became the catalyst. Yeah. So, so short-term differing opinions where it's like, I want to do this or I want to do this, it was brought back to, okay, well, actually, let's break it down, look at the pros and cons, what actually serves the vision in the most effective manner. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys have done that beautifully. No, it doesn't just sound like it. I've seen it. Yeah. So it's one on one. Yeah. It's fantastic. So just to, to not, not to, to brag or anything like that, but just out of curiosity, if we looked at over the four years, each year, sort of the, the percentage of growth, we don't need to talk numbers necessarily, but more like percentage of growth. What sort of results have you been able to achieve since you've, you've collaborated your leadership? You got clear on your vision together. You've been expanding your team, building the brand. Yeah. Um, look, I think year on year, looking back at the numbers, anywhere between 100 to 300 percent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and the amazing. biggest jump was exactly like Andy said. Once that vision was aligned mm. and the communication was open, yeah. we saw our greatest uh, benefit. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. I mean, mm. one to 300 percent per year. That's mm. fantastic. Really, mm. congratulations, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I only see that getting bigger and bigger and stronger as well. Yeah. 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 Mm. Definitely. Wow. So. So where would you love to be in another sort of five years time? Where, where would you love to be from here to five years time? I think, um, you know, how I view it and, uh, and how I, I see what I see for integrity is that sort of as we are emerging, I feel like we're literally at the foundations of what our capacity is. Mm. I know that we have not yet reached our sort of running pace. Mm. Uh, I think five years will be an awesome time. Yeah. Not to say, hey, I'm not enjoying the present, mm. but you know, the five years from now, the company will be a very well known, very well established, and sort of almost you know every name in the industry can recognise it as the premium builder. Mm. So you know, just like you might have your Tom Ford and your Chanel. We want to be the top one <laughs> Chanel of building. I love you know? it. And <laughs> love it. You know, there's, there's a certain level of service that goes with it, a certain level of expectation, a certain level of cost. Yeah. And we are going to be that. That's what I really see. On top of that, I guess the, the alternative is that we want to bring another product to the market, which will be the development side. Mm-hmm. We'd, we'd love to brand and build our own developments yeah. cool. to which we can you know, give the market from an authority perspective what it can have and show and break bounds of mm-hmm. what can be created from building design, building delivery, and you know development. And that, 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 that excites me probably the most. Fantastic. And that's you know, the 5, 10, 20 yeah. year sort of drive down the path. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Awesome. Love it. And I, I can absolutely, absolutely see that happening. So it's being responsible for the whole um, concept to completion, delivery of a project, exactly. and then the end user well, gets to experience your craftsmanship, your mastery, the yeah. art, the artistry. Yeah. Yep. How important do you think customer service is? Tell us about some of your learnings in that region about, because we've talked about the importance of vision, yes. which is about the, from a business point of view mm. and pursuing a, a vision that's congruent with, with where you want to be heading and having all team members on board. Mm. How important do you think the customer focus is in the success of a business? Yeah. So, Customer focus for us is number one. Mm. It is number one, absolutely paramount in every single project. And we came to this understanding, once again, looking at high-end hotels and seeing how, do, how did the best in the business do it? Mm. 
and why do they do it? Uh, we found a few examples early on where we delivered a project perfectly. Great quality, all on time. Mm. But maybe we missed a few points of the service and the client was left with a sour taste in their mouth. Yeah, wow. They were left with a beautiful product but yeah. they didn't have the best service. Conversely, we've had projects where for whatever reason the supply has been delayed, the projects ran over time, ran over schedule, but the service was on point. We really connected with the client and mm. communicated with the client mm. and they loved it. They were absolutely wrapped. Mm -hmm. So it really made us think and reflect and say, okay, well, what's really important here? What's, what is number one? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, people forget a two week delay. Mm -hmm. People forget, oh, it costed $5,000 extra because of whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But they don't forget the feeling. Mm -hmm. the feeling they had during that renovation. And that to us is the most important. What feeling are we going to leave this person with? Because that then flows on to how they describe the renovation to the next person, mm -hmm. how they look at their bathroom or kitchen or home and feel. That feeling is always connected and never goes away. So a little bit philosophical, but mm -hmm. that's actually how important it is for us. Mm -hmm. And we try and drive that every single day through our business. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah. Just, just to add to that as well, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think what we, how we experience things and the way in which we feel, the customer experience, you know, for, us as a team you know we drive this home to the entire team the importance of service not yeah. because of okay cool because we sell nice things purely on the fact that the, the way you make people feel is a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself Ooh. and please explain I, and and yeah i'll explain that and what i correlate you know with the team continuously and we drive on this is that you know if you're uh, feeling confident and comfortable in who you are and you can deliver beautiful service to people and you know one of the most important things for me is that I love my life mm. I really do mm. and I look at how I feel about myself and the correlation to which I give the service between our company mm. goes hand in hand mm. and it's pivotal you know if you know people are complaining they're not complaining because of the sheer problem mm. they're complaining about how they feel about the problem mm. and it's on us to sort of understand and I think you know that's what we we worked on for so many years together Brian was that sort of self-reflection of what can I be better in what can I do better? And, and something that, you know, when we were faced with challenges with service, it's like, okay, cool. Their point may not may or may not be valid, but what could we have done better? How could mm. we have approached it better? Mm. And it gives a sense of responsibility to mm. oneself. Mm. And I think that's what we, you know, we spent a lot of time learning on was to sort of be able to self-reflect on oneself, look at the situation and go, how could I have done it better? Mm. And that's what we strive with the team, mm. you know? We talk importantly a lot about culture mm. within our company. Mm. And the reason why we ask, you know, and, and push so importantly hard on sort of the self-reflection is that, you know, in order to improve, in order to give this impeccable service, in order to continually be better than every other piece of the competition, we need to look back at what could we have done better. Mm. And that gives us a bit of accountability. <laughs> and I love that because it's a nev never ending tool. doesn't matter how good I am right now. 10 years, I'm still chasing me. Oh, yeah. I love this. Oh, yeah. there's so, so many fantastic points you guys have just brought up. Um, I want to back up just for a moment to, to touch on how you absolutely nailed it in terms of with the sales and, and the current market where it's at is that it's all about the customer experience. It's not yeah. just about the doing, that yeah. we have a checklist and well, we delivered the product, it was on time, it, it was what they asked for. So objectively, yes, we did the doing. But mm. the key is, how was it done? What was the energy behind it? What was the level of service? How much yeah. care, how much genuine um, um, uh, effort was put in to really ensure that their, their emotional needs were met as well? Because exactly. it's the experience that lives uh, long on. And it yeah. sounds like also that that's one of your strengths, yeah. which is how you get so many referrals. And I think people yeah. underestimate that word of mouth is yeah. the biggest point of marketing. Yeah. And Definitely. you can do all these fancy videos and someone can do all these fancy paid for marketing, mm. which it's becoming harder and harder to distinguish the real deal from yeah. the people who know how to sort of create a great um, facade or, or show. Correct. So one thing that can never be faked is a word of mouth referral. So it's, it's absolutely, you're nailing it guys in, in, in really drilling in on that. It's the customer yeah. experience. 
second thing I absolutely love was the notion of taking responsibility. Yeah. I think because it's, it's so easy for people to do well when yeah. things are going their way. Oh, yeah. When, when a bit of success is being achieved <laughs> and the, the ocean's got s- small waves and, and, and the, it's, it's smooth sailing, but it's when obstacles arise. Yeah, the big storms come. And, and yeah. being, able to, being able to see beyond right or wrong or, yeah, but it's not fair or, but we did everything we could and the customer wasn't happy. It's about taking responsibility. You, you've nailed it saying, well, okay, but still what could we do differently? How could yeah. we approach, approach this more effectively? What could we do better? Because yeah. what you do then is there's no cap. So, so for the listeners, when we take responsibility, we essentially are saying there is no ceiling on my ability to grow. But the minute we avoid responsibility and we either blame someone else or we complain about the situation or we make excuses for a certain situation or event that we've ended up in, then we're essentially saying, hey, someone else is responsible for this. Mm -hmm. So we put a cup on our learning. Whereas when we take responsibility and we look within, which is what I love that you guys do, the the constant Mm self-reflection, and there is a big sense of philosophy. Aaron, you touched on it, that it it may sound a bit philosophical to some, but, but really caring about the experience you're providing is a commitment to not only delivering great value, but it's also stepping up yourselves yeah. so the more value we recognize in ourselves, the more value we know how to actually offer and therefore the more it's received from the market and the market really appreciates that and therefore it's received back in multiple correct so, infinite potential yeah, yeah. awesome awesome like about it. <laughs> awesome um so what's your approach to learning and and growth do you you've, you've achieved some success so what's how do you keep growing? What, how do you, do you, do you guys read a lot? Do you attend courses? What, what is it? How do you stay ahead of the game? What's... Yeah, so Andrew and I have placed a lot of focus on personal growth. Yeah, cool. Um, surrounding ourselves with people that challenge us, um, that don't leave us content mm. and complacent. Mm. Um, a, a large part of that is Andrew and I challenging each other. Nice. Um, we know that we've, we're in this for a very long time. We've got a long game to play and we're nowhere near where we need to be. Mm. So whatever that is, if that's reading, audiobooks, mm. uh, if that's just having a conversation with someone and going out and having dinners with people, yeah. just as much learning there. Yeah. Um, whatever it is for you to read and grow at the time, that's what, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Um, and that changes from you know, over the months. Yeah. yeah. And how important do you think it is to surround yourself with people who are aspiring to go places as well and happy to stretch beyond their comfort zone? What's yeah. your thoughts on the difference between someone who is just content and, and wants to be more comfortable versus having peers who are also seeking growth? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's pivotal. Um, you know, for me, personally, in my own personal life, you know, Aaron is one of my best friends, mm. you know, one of my brothers. Yeah. And, but I'm meticulous in who I spend my time with. And that's purely on the fact of that I want to feel as though that I'm continually growing. And like Aaron was mentioning, you know, the, the circumstance can change whether we're reading, you know, listening to audio books, etc. Mm-hmm. I feel as though it's, it's pivotal to be mindful of who you spend your time with because you're generally uh, a cultivation of the thoughts you surround your time with. Mm-hmm. On top of that, I think, you know, it's, it's really important to, to look at problems objectively, you know. I mean, if we look at just a cross-section of business, you know, we have a financial problem. We have something that we need to discuss with. You know, we highlighted this early in the business. We've got a CFO. Mm. The reason we've got a CFO is not because we can't report our own numbers or we mm. can't find out. We want insight into what do these numbers mean. Mm. And by getting an expert in, we mm. have an understanding of what those numbers mean. Same thing with the culture. I mean, again, Byron, we work with you. The, the key situation was not because, hey, we can't, we, we can't talk to each other at a reasonable level. Mm. It's that what are we missing in the potential of? Mm. You know, and I think a lot of people sort of misunderstand the importance of the infinite potential, what you have not known or have not seen yet, Mm -hmm. and what could that result in, Mm -hmm. you know? They're the things that only come through deep thought. And I tend to find, you know, if I spend my time with smarter people, (laughs) I can learn a bit (laughs) off them, (laughs) you know? I love that. It's a bit rubs off. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Not a lot, in my case. (laughs) And I think that's, it's, it's such a common theme, the importance of really being able to demonstrate to the customer the value that you can provide. And if yeah. it's not done in a manner that the customer understands, 
and in a context that which they perceive there to be great return on the investment amount that uh, you may be seeking in your sales role, then the sale won't happen. Correct. So it's very important about re giving them that assurance that they can get that value. Um, you also touched on the uh, uh, I lost track, but you touched on a, a really golden point, which I wanted to focus in on was the importance of investing in yourself. Mm. And that's that sometimes people look at it as an expense. Yeah. That they're, they're spending money. So it's like, oh, but I'm only earning X amount. And if I'm going to go and spend this money on my education or to do this course or to get some mentoring, then I'm making less money. Yeah. Whereas being able to view it as an investment yeah. Yeah. and knowing that, okay, I'm thinking about this for the long term, Point on then one. the return on investment can become multiple. So for example, clients I work with, I always offer and assure them that we'd be looking for anywhere between a five to 10 times investment, the return on your investment. So if someone who, whether it's in a business and there's a certain investment for say coaching and consulting, then we'd want to be at least five times or 10 times that in terms of revenue growth. Yeah. Or for someone who works in the world of corporate, it's okay, well, whatever the investment amount is, we'd be looking to add five times, times plus in your um, with promotions or getting salary increase and that sort of thing. So it makes it a lot more tangible for people to understand, hey, I'm going to get a return on this investment. Yeah. Correct. Um, Andy, you wanted to add something? I think, you know, for me, I look at it as almost like a mental tax, like, you know, the taxes you have to pay yeah. are unavoidable. Yeah. Now, I think, you know, the key for me was sort of placing in placing that sort of cost of like, okay, cool. I've now set aside this money each week. Mm. to go okay cool i'm happy to invest in this yeah and then you know i guess you know money can be important to some you know mm. as we all know it's 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 an important degree yeah. of life but also at the same time it helps us a few yeah. situation but it's a bit of a scorecard of like sort of where you're traveling yeah and i think if you can sort of for me you know very early in the piece it was purchasing books you know mm. the non-expensive thing 20 30 mm. 40 50 dollars and mm. as you know time and time becomes shorter you're investing larger and larger for shorter amounts of time yeah. and to get to the knowledge faster. So for me, I, I place a mental tax on myself and go, okay, cool. If I invest myself in this, is it going to get me any closer to my higher grand division? Mm. And if it does, invest the money. No. Similar to like a, you know, we place a marketing budget each year and we go, okay, cool. We're happy to invest in, you know, ads, Instagram, you know, Facebook. Uh, PR, whichever those things may, may yes. be. Yes. There's a cost and there's a return on, on investment, you yeah. know, and each one of those need to make correlation sense. Same thing in sort of personal development is that, you know, if we can look at what do I want to achieve for the year? Yeah. Where am I short? Yeah. Look at ourselves objectively and go, what am I willing to, you know, sacrifice in order to potentially reach a high level of myself? Yeah. yeah. And that's where the infinite potential is, you know. We've been talking about this for such a long time, you know. Where are we going to be in 10 years? Who, yeah. Who's that person we want to be? Yeah. And for me, it's a continual chase. And yeah. if I can know that I have control of that, that's far more, far more enjoyable. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like that's, that's what inspires you as well, to, to be that best version cool. of yourselves in cool. 10 years' time. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of inspiration, where do you draw inspiration from, guys? Where do we draw inspiration from? I personally yeah. draw inspiration from my life in general. Yeah. So to be able to focus and grow in areas that I choose, whether it be hobbies, family, and chase that ideal goal of being the absolute best that I could be that I never thought I could be, yeah. that's where my inspiration comes from. And I think over the years I've continually surprised myself mm. as to what I can do and how much better I can be. Yeah. And that uncertainty is what drives me. How much better can I be? I don't know, mm. but I'd like to find out. Mm. That's really what drives me. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like that because not only are you both really focused on the long term, where you want to get to and, and how much you want to evolve and expand yourselves, you also put a lot of time and effort into enjoying the moment as well. Oh, yeah. Because it's very easy for people to misconstrue a message to think it's all about in 10 years, I've got to get there. I've got to, it's just, if I don't get there, if I'm not there yet, then I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I've got to grow faster. I've got to achieve more quicker, quicker, quicker. So tell, tell us a little bit more about how you maintain balance. What's important to you about 
overall success. What does success really mean to each of you? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Well, for me personally, um, work, business is a really, really important part of my life. Mm -hmm. But equally is my relationship with my wife yeah. and my family. And that takes just as much attention. Yeah. If not a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. On Relationships that, aren't easy. Yeah. Oh, God, of course not. Um, and it's a new frontier. Mm. And on top of that, there is the balance of, you know, I, I like to stay fit. I, I compete in judo, yeah. some martial art. Yeah, fantastic. And that in itself is an endeavor into the unknown of how do I improve and how can I get better? There's so much complexity there. Mm. So for me, I've never felt as fulfilled in my life as I do right now. Yeah. And the reason why is I've set rules and parameters around how much time I spend on a certain area of my life. Early on for Andrew and I, it was all about the business. Yeah. I was working seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah. And it was all about business. Wow. And I was miserable. Mm. Um, things were progressing and the vision was strong, but that is not sustainable. Yeah. Whereas recently, in the past year or so, Andrew and I have started setting rules around uh, how much time we spend on the business. Mm. And when we turn off and focus on other areas of life, and instead of having the effect of focusing less on business, it's made us more driven, mm. more uh, passionate about what we're doing within that time frame. Mm. Everyone's got the same amount of time, and there's no reason why we can't achieve the best in everything. Mm. So that's really my new goal, what's driving yeah. me in life. Yeah. It's super important for balance. I've never been as focused. I love it. I love it. And I think. Um, Andy, I want to hear your definition of success. I just want to touch on the idea that sometimes putting all your time and energy just into one area of life, it's important to recognize that if that's becoming a detriment to some of the other areas of your life, eventually it's going to drain you and we're going to feel a bit tired. We're going to feel less inspired, less motivated. And that will actually take its toll on that one area where we've been focusing so much time and attention. Yeah. So having rules which some people can feel like, oh, I don't like rules. I'm, I, I like the freedom. I like mm. the spontaneity. It sounds like it's also about standards. So, yeah. so knowing what's important to you and then Correct. setting some yeah. parameters to go, okay, these are my must-dos in terms of the things that are most important mm. and in a, a more scheduled, dedicated time frame per week so that each area of life can be growing and, and prospering so that one is not growing at the expense of the others, which yeah. is fantastic. Love yeah. it. Awesome. Um, I think for me, how I look at my uh, vision and my inspiration is I have an ideal hero. This hero I'll never, ever, ever attain. <laughs> He's the cool, I'm good looking, <laughs> down to earth, calm guy. And, you know, I draw a lot of inspiration from, you know, visual things. Is that Iron Man or? No, 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 no. <laughs> this person doesn't exist. This person is me. <laughs> This person is me and I'm simply, you know. Cool. So you have like a hypothetical vision of, of the ideal you? Is Absolutely. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I take a draw of, of everything, you know. If I look at, you know, the man, man of style, which is say an example B. I look at the person who's classic, who's mm. got it going on. Mm. You know, for me, a bit of inspiration was Tom Ford. Yeah. The man who has just absolutely changed the industry. Mm. You know, for me, another big hobby is cars. Mm. I love cars. Mm. And I look at the peak of, you know, high performance cars. And I look at well, who are the people that are changing the bounce. Mm. And do I want to be associated to that? Yeah. And then holistically, I have a very sort of, you know, for me personally, I love the idea of a rounded approach. I want to look at myself objectively and go, have I looked at, am I a person that I would like to be friends with? Mm. You know, am I a cool person that people would love to experience me? And I, nice. I want to know that that feeling is on all areas of life. I've touched on each point, you know, health, fitness, business, you know, fashion, all the areas that I have importance to me, I sort of have worked on collectively, mm. not let one drag behind. Mm. Because I find, and you know, for, and this might be for the large population as well, that if we're sort of working on every area, continuously and we're not letting anything slip up and we've kept those impeccable standards you feel incredible mm -hmm. you know and i look at my life and i'm i'm enthused by who i am mm. i'm utterly in love with myself mm. and what i want to achieve mm. in it gives me a sense of fulfillment to go okay cool you know if i put the time in i'm getting closer and closer to this you know hero yeah <laughs> that i've made yeah. up in my mind yeah and that provides me a sense of grounding to yeah. be present with everyone I'm around yeah. Yeah. but also a bit of gratitude for you know where I'm going and where I'm at I really I really really dig that and 
I love the distinction also between when we talk about the concept of self-love, some people could easily misunderstand it and misinterpret it as being someone who's overly into themselves or they've got a gigantic ego versus self-love at its core is recognizing one's value, one's self-worth and Mm -hmm. what we have to offer the world around us to contribute in an effective manner. And I love that you've synthesized those two components because you've said, okay, the benchmark or the measure is also that would people want to hang out with me? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I, am I a positive influence, a positive energy to be around? And I, I love that idea because it works not only in a relationship context with, say, an intimate partner or a group of friends or even our relationship with ourselves, mm. but in the workforce too. And time and again, we see sometimes in, in today's culture a little bit is a little sense of uh, entitlement or kind of wanting something faster than we've earned mm. the right to achieve it. Mm. And people feel like, oh, I should be earning more. I should be get the promotion already. Oh, I should be running my own business. But it's our rewards in life are a reflection of the value we provide others. Yeah. And I think such a good way to measure that and reflect on it is, okay, would I hire me for the amount of money I'm seeking based on the level of performance I'm outputting? Oh, yeah. And then you can create this criteria for, okay, I want to earn half a million dollars a year. Well, if I was going to pay someone half a million dollars a year, what would I expect from them? How would I expect them to be, to behave, their energy, their attitude, their punctuality, their promptness, the level of service, the care they provide others? Are you measuring up to that? And that can become a great benchmark for us to assess ourselves against because I always uh, believe that in order to get to the next level of our own evolution, we need to fill the space of our current level. That's when the doors open up. But if we underperform in our current space because we're too busy thinking ahead to, oh, I want to have the promotion already. I want to have my own business and be this big successful person already. It's like, okay, when you become too big for your current space and you're adding too much value, then naturally the doors are going to open up because your position becomes obsolete where someone else can take that space. And then you earn the right to get to the next spot. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Very good point. It's cool. Cool, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> how, how much do you think that self-growth in where the business sounds like it was the catalyst for mm. investing in yourselves to grow, to learn more, to become uh, better businessmen, to become better leaders, to become better business partners, to become better salesmen. How much do you think that's impacted on your other relationships outside of the workplace? Oh, totally, completely. Um, when you're in business, you're completely immersed mm. and you feel the brunt of all the negatives and you feel the highs of all the positives. What this does over time is really, really build character. Mm. A lot of character. Mm. And it's not a character that's limited only to business and then you leave your, your business and go back to the normal person you are. It does not happen. Yeah. Um, you feel a change within you. Um, you start to maybe even change the people that you hang out with. You may maybe even look into things that you know you weren't, didn't think was interesting before, mm. uh, but is now interesting. Your whole character changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's business largely forces that on you. It's either grow or die, mm. <laughs> really, yeah. for a lot of businesses. Yeah. Um, and Agreed. only the people that, that stick through it, persevere, and go through that growth, come out the other end thinking, wow, I've really changed as a person. Mm. Um, and it's non-stop. Mm. It's continual. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's a great thing. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Andy, what do you think? I think um, with that as well, I, you know, Aaron touched on a really good point. There's no business hat than the personal hat. Yeah. Yeah, it's an integration. Okay. Yeah. And I like when I look at my life, life needs to fit into everything. Mm. Integrated, you know, whether it be fitness, business, etc. And this is something we've driven in our culture. I think there's a lot of the reason why mm. you know, our team is fulfilled. The reason why they're so happy to be at the place that they're at is that there are no bounds. Mm. There's infinite potential in their you know, job opportunities. There's infinite potential with the company. There's infinite potential in their life. Mm. You know, we have a very close-knit team. Mm. And I think giving and, and l- teaching them, you know, leading them on what life integration is Mm. business and personal go hand in hand Mm. and how you feel about you know your business life is a direct reflection how you feel about your personal life and how you feel about your personal life is a direct reflection of what the work you do so intertwined isn't it yeah Yeah. Yeah. so we've really driven and led home on that you know so if 
you want to go through the day, go to the gym, yeah. get it done. Yeah. You want to, you know, sit down, take 15 minutes to meditate, do yeah. it. Yeah. If you enjoy a slow morning where you prefer to drink a coffee and, and get into it, result, the, the proof's in the pudding. Yeah. The results. Yeah. 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 And there's no better feeling than feeling great. <laughs> you know, and knowing that all areas have been covered off. It's like, all right, cool, I've got, you know, all the things that are important to me done mm. within the day. Yeah. And that provides sustainability. That's yeah. what I see. So that integration, like you know, Aaron was saying, is, is pivotal to longevity. Yeah. 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 Really awesome. I've I've seen it um, consistently with, with people who are succeeding really well in in any particular area of life, it's how they do business is generally a reflection of how they handle, say, relationships or how they mm-hmm. handle their health. It's those who have a success formula down pat, usually they can replicate it into other areas, yeah. Oh, yeah. provided they're seeking balance. I think an important yeah. distinction is that sometimes people spend too much time and effort in one area, yeah. neglecting other areas of life where it yeah. can be sometimes uh, unhealthy if it's if it's too much business time and effort and it's they're not looking after their health and mm. neglecting a relationship then eventually it's going to catch up with them so that's why it's it's such a sustainable and maintainable approach that you guys have where you're seeking to have that holistic approach to success and well-being which i'm yeah. a massive advocate for that's the message i want to share with the world oh yeah is and that's why i wanted you guys here on this first podcast because <laughs> you're your pillar examples of that so it's fantastic Awesome, guys. Um, best advice you've ever been given? Each of you. I got one. I'll let you start All right, let's go. So my one was many a years ago. Um, so I used to have a bit of a challenging relationship with my dad. <laughs> and he very much disagreed that I started to work for myself. He thought that I'd be much better to stay in a linear role and, and work my way up. And I remember he's like, okay, you're not going to take my advice because he knew that we sort of had a bit of a fiery relationship at the time. Mm. And he goes, but I want you to do me a favor. Mm. He goes, I want you to give this person a call. He's expecting your call. He goes, okay. So I said, cool. To cover off and make my dad happy, I'll give this guy a call. Completely call a a random guy and um, he's obviously known who I am, knows my name, Mm. etc. And he approached me with a very sort of very humble and nice approach. He was very listening, very understanding, very caring towards what I was intending to do. You know, he gave me a lot of encouragement. He goes, Andrew, you know, take my hat off to you. You know, you, you want to start a business, that's awesome. I, I respect you immensely for doing this. And we ended up getting into a conversation and he goes, Andrew, I want to give you one of the best pieces of advice that I've been handed to me. Yes. Is I'm going to give it to you. And it sort of stuck with me for, geez, I don't know, 10 years. And he goes, Andrew, When you're in the mirror each morning, I want you to look at the reflection of who you're looking at Mm. and like who you like, Mm. like who's looking back at you. Mm. Be important. And he goes, as you're shaving in the morning, you know, if you're not happy with the person that is reflecting back at you in the mirror, change things. Mm. If you're happy with who the person you're looking at in the mirror, keep going. And he goes, the compound is incredible. It's amazing. He goes, you know, you'll be amazed what compound will do. And um, I sort of laid down the phone and uh, sit down on the couch with my dad and sort of, you know, how did the conversation go? And it was kind of like a, it was an almost diff- very different moment between the relationship between my dad and myself. Mm. And it was nice to sort of just openly chat about it. And we had a brief conversation. And, um, you know, later on in the piece, I ended up finding out that this guy was very successful and run, you know, worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars. But what I think what really gave me that sense of like appreciation and gratitude that I, the reason I carried it through is that you know he could be so understanding, so humble, uh, and so understanding of that you know we are human, and that if you know if you like who you are, you're going to have a great sustainable life, and that's that's my number one. It, it really hit me home is that to to feel that you know I like who I am mm. and I like where I'm going. Mm. And, you know, if I don't see that, I change my direction. And that's my, that has been my number one advice. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I love that. Beautiful. Um, My best bit of advice was actually from you, Bo. Oh, really? (laughs) It was a very pivotal life-changing moment after then. Not sure if I ever told you this. Um, But there was a time where I was feeling um, pretty upset about something someone had said. It it had struck a nerve with me. Mm. And what they had said was, something along the lines of, you're not going to succeed. Mm. It was 
I took it as a personal attack. And what you opened my eyes up to was, okay, you said, Aaron, you're pretty good at maths, right? I'm pretty good at maths. <laughs> now, I said, yes. He then said to me, okay, what if someone was to say to you, you suck at maths? What would you say? I answered, well, I would laugh. Because mm. it's just simply not true. Mm. So then what you pointed out to me was, well, then why is this affecting you? If mm. someone says you're not going to succeed. Mm. And what that opened up to me was the fact that it's got nothing to do with what other people are saying or doing to me, mm. but everything to do with how I feel about myself, mm. how I see myself, how I view myself. And that was the key point of difference. Mm. Small point, but that then led on to every other area of my life. To take complete responsibility mm. to really understand that I'm, I'm not a victim of circumstance mm. I'm not at the whim of other people's words or actions mm. um, but I'm in complete control of how I feel at all times mm. and if I'm in a foul mood for whatever reason it's by choice mm. if I'm not in the position where I want to be in life it's by choice every single thing is my own decision and my own action mm. um, and that was many years ago probably three or four years ago that we had that discussion and that has grown and grown and I've never, ever, ever forgotten that. To the point where mm. I think I wrote it down on a piece of paper and kept it in my wallet for about two years. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's affected me tremendously and completely changed the path of my life. So thank you, bro. Oh, wow. That's inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. guys. Uh, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show. There's been a ton of value, a ton of insights. Um, the, the three key takeaways for me is the importance of investing in yourself mm. and that we're, we're limitless in what we can achieve mm. when we are willing to keep looking keep looking within look at where there's room to grow room to refine mm. and the second thing is focusing on adding value to others oh, yeah. that the more we're focused on adding value to others mm. it, it, um, the rewards are reflected back to us yeah. correct and then the third thing that really stood out to me was um, that holistic approach to yeah. make sure different areas of life are complementing each other, yeah. working with one another instead of against each other, because that leads to sustainability and a long-term ability to really succeed and keep going and thriving. So I'd love to thank all, uh, both of you very much for your time. Thank you. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And I, and I look forward to, <laughs> to seeing more of your continuing success. And, and being part of your journey as well. Thanks. Thanks, thank, you, thank you guys. Take care. There you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Limitless with me, your host, Byron Saka. If you found value in today's episode, then please do me a favor and drop me a review. I'd love to read what you have to say. And if there's any special requests you may have for future episodes so that we can keep delivering awesome value for you guys, please let us know. Uh, also, if you haven't already, please subscribe now on whichever platform you're connecting with us on and be sure to share this episode with anyone you feel who can benefit from these episodes. And you can join us on this mission to helping people live limitlessly and obtain sustainable, lasting success. If you'd like to get in touch, you can reach me at www.byronsaka.com or on my Instagram page at Byron Saka. And I look forward to sharing the next episode with you soon.